So a while back, I posted a video. Um, it's called How to Draw Eyes Eyebrows. And that is a very advanced drawing video. And I've noticed that, you know, a lot of times you get into a drawing, you just don't even know where to start. And I want to take a minute and talk about how to piece together something like that. You know, we could talk all day long about how to do all the fancy shadows and everything that are in all of the little details of an eyeball. But really what you need from the start is how to get things in the right place. Let me try to elaborate and do a simple version of this how to draw an eye to help those of you out there that are just trying to pick up how to get things in the right place. Most people understand the concept of an eye that you've got this football shape, you know, but it's all of the, it's all of the details around that that cause it to look like a human eye just as much as that shape itself. So it, you have uh, in every eye there are things that every eye has in common and there are things that are unique. So let's focus on the things that every every eye has in common and then you can build within those guidelines. The arch top and then you have this you know, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this big so you can see real well. Okay. So an eye has the upper eyelid. The corner of the eye pops out from that and goes in towards the nose. So you see this little shape I'm making. Notice this corner here. Every single eye has that. Okay, then there's another one. If you were to draw a line slightly diagonal, that's where the next corner is. And then this under eyelid arches downward. It doesn't arch as much as the upper eyelid. That's another thing that just about every eye has in common. So to make your eye look normal, this arch should be less arched than this one. So let me bring that up. Now a typical eye, these will be pretty much level, but I will tell you that a more feminine looking eye tends to be downward slanted so that this corner is a little higher. And I think that comes from not having as deep of an eye socket. It's just the way the skin comes around the eyeball here. So if I were to slant eyes more downward on a person, it would look a little more feminine. And if I were to tilt it the other way, it's a little more of a masculine look masculine look with the eyes tilted like this. Anyway, back on subject, um, we've got this corner. You can see mine's a little higher than this one, so I'm drawing this eye at kind of an angle. They typically be more level. And then you've got the eye iris. Okay, so let's do the eyeball part. And that, unless the eye is really opened wide, it doesn't show the entire iris. But it would if it was open real wide. So if you want to make someone look real surprised, you show the whole thing. Now, I've got this shape. There's always a shadow here. And so let's do this. We've got this layer of skin that's kind of heavier here. Let's make a shadow. And then this is a very important part. There's basic boundaries around the shadowing of an iris. And so you go like this. See this area I made? That is the lighter area. That's lighter because light comes into anything like an eyeball, a drop of water, like I explained in my other video. The way that that retina bends the light is in a way that anything coming from the top will bounce out of the bottom side. That's what you'll see. So the bottom is lit not only from that, but also from the shadow of the eyelid on the top. So why did I draw this line? That line doesn't exist on an eyeball. It's just a boundary line. And I use those a lot in all of my drawings. So let's start filling this in. This is the more shadowed part of the eye. Okay. Now the natural coloring of an eye is darker towards the edge of the iris right here. Let's go like this. All right, then we're going to make the pupil in here. Let's leave a spot empty though so that we have some reflection showing. See what I'm saying? Doing a YouTube video. Okay, you can see I've got this boundary line drawn, and so I'm going to start erasing this part of it here. And then you'll see just by tapering my lines, I'll just do these lines on the retina part of the eye, and I'll taper them off, make them less and less as they come down, just following the edge of that circle. 
So this technique you might use if you were doing just a sketch, maybe a rendering for a job or just doing a quick sketch to decide your more detailed stuff later. Then uh, finish this pupil, leave some reflection in here. So you've got all this shadow. This is, this is a real nice general format to make an eye look natural from the start. So then I, I can put these extra lines in here showing that this showing that this eyelid here has some depth to it. And then I can define this shadow here more because I the bigger I make the shadow, the heavier it makes that upper eyelid look. So if I make the shadow real big, that eye is going to start looking real sleepy. So we go like this. All right, then this area is usually, um, you know, you'll usually see little dots of reflection in there. I guess I could fill it in and kind of just leave like a bright spot in there for an example. I mean, it is kind of a red color, so when, when you translate things to black and white, it's pretty dark. Uh, red is typically a dark color. Okay, another very important part of the anatomy of every eye is this upper eyelid. So watch this line that I'm going to make. It's just arches and just follows the shape of the eye. But that can vary a lot on a more mature eye, especially, uh, especially more masculine eyes, deeper eye sockets, this upper part will start to flatten out like this because that's the skin kind of sagging down over the top. And so you have this flat part and then you have this coming down like that. And then you might have more shadows here where it's tapering out to the rest of the eye socket like so. Okay, so now this is a little more of a mature, a little older eye. If I wanted to make it a more infant looking eye, you know, a little more of a baby's eye, then I would have I would have this just be a smooth like that. A little more of a feminine look uh, on on ladies or or on babies. And a baby's eye would have a lot less of this part right here. That would be a lot smaller and the eye would be, but I'm not going to erase that. Okay, so we've got this part. So let's just make it a happy medium. We'll flatten it out a little bit on top, make it very average looking like this, right? Then you've got the eyebrow. Eyebrow comes out to about here because you're going to have a, you're going to have a nose at this part. And so we don't want to, I'm not going to do a unibrow. I'm going to stop it right where the arch of the nose starts. And then I did this on the video. There's this certain pattern. Every eyebrow has this in common, this direction of hair growth. So it kind of spirals around like this. Then you have some hairs that grow straight like this. All right, and then, let's see, let me remember this. Oh yeah, and then, and then they start kind of pointing downward like this. Now this might be a smooth arch, but the direction of the hairs still follows this. And then there's another, there's kind of a calic in the middle. And then these, I'm gonna start again and then these are going up like this. They're, they're pointing at this angle. And then as they come out here, they'll taper off, get a little thinner. And you'll see all kinds of variations within these guidelines. But a lot of times you'll see a darker area kind of in the, in the middle of an eyebrow because it's where that calic is. There's a direction of hair growth here, you know. So we've got eyelid. We've got eyebrow. You need this space here. This space is real important. And then I'm going to put some shadows in here to show that this portion, let me draw a boundary line for you, okay? Here's a boundary line. This portion is not as shadowed on an eye because that is coming out further while these tend to recede further into the eye socket. So let's shadow these areas, and I'm just going to use lines to taper out. The shadow's darker there, and then we'll do the same thing here, right? So this is a very typical eye socket. Okay, then there's, there's also an outline that comes around this portion of it. This is just a shadow, again, because this is a, once again, where, where there's kind of a deeper portion of the eye socket that changes angles, and so it catches a shadow. And then there's the under eyelid. 
you'll always see at least a couple little lines where the skin is just like the wrinkles in the palm of your hand. You've got that wrinkle where, where the skin folds to lower and raise the eyelid. Some people have more, some people have less, old people have a lot. So we go a couple like that. If I wanted to make this eye look like an old person's eye, I would go ahead and, and bring this out, and then I bring this down. These permanent folds start developing all around these, these boundary areas. And then it might come up again, you know, and this is how I did that big old eye. I did the wrinkles on the face of that Bigfoot in the beer cave mural. But well, I don't want to make this an old. I don't want to make this an old eye. Okay. So I'm going to leave it like that. Then we come around here and do some shadows here. Once again, there's the same kind of boundary area. This part sticks out further than this. So these areas on the edge of that under eyelid tend to have a shadow, right? Like this. This is the basic anatomy of an eye. Now, it keeps going all down, you know, we could draw the rest of the face, but let's not do that right now. I'm going to show you how to place a couple of eyes on a face so that you can get them, you know, because that's the struggle. It's, it's like, okay, you see all the different parts of the eye, but how do I, why does my eye look stupid still? You know what I'm saying? So let's get it on a face, make it look right. Erase this guy. Now, being able to draw symmetry, it's totally a skill. you got to develop your ability to do that. And a good way to practice that is to draw something symmetrical, you know, like a Superman S, right? And then once you draw it, you want to hold it up to a mirror to check the symmetry on it. I learned when I was little because I liked Superman so much how to draw the S. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoosh, goes like that. <laughs> Superman. So I'm going to use the shape, the Superman S. Watch how I use that shape to put eyes on a face. All right, let's erase this.